Hey, Jack. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Jack. What's today's big idea? Dave, our theme today is choose the right tools. Over the past few years, there's been a growing number of data visualization tools. Yeah, there's so many, I have a hard time deciding which ones to use. Exactly. So let's create a list of things to consider when making tool choices. For example, price. Is the tool free or is there a freemium model to pay for higher usage or more features? Easy to learn. Is the tool relatively simple for new users without coding skills? Power. Does the tool support large amounts of data and various types of visualizations? Customization. Can I modify the details about how my work appears? Data migration. Can I easily move my data in and out in case I switch to a different tool? Hosting. Can I decide where my data and the visualizations will be hosted online? And support. Is the tool actively maintained by its creators and do they answer questions? Open source. Is the tool's software visible? Can it be modified and redistributed? Mm -hmm. And security. Is the tool of my data protected against malicious hackers and malware? Collaborative. Does the tool allow different people to work on the same product at the same time? Privacy. Under the terms of service, is my data and work private or public? Error friendly. When something goes wrong, does the tool point out possible problems and solutions? Cross-platform. Does the tool work across different computer operating systems? Mobile friendly. Will it correctly display my work on various mobile devices and browsers? Well, that's a long list. Something's going to have to give. For example, many of the drag and drop tools that we teach are easy to learn, but they're not as sophisticated and powerful as some of the more advanced tools that require coding skills. Okay, so let's create an exercise that brings all this together. Why don't we have everyone create one type of data visualization, like a simple point map? And we'll use tutorials um, for three different drag and drop tools. And we can ask everyone to rate each tool based on these criteria. And then we should do this on different types of computers. Like, I'll do this on a Mac. I'll use Windows. I'll use the Chromebook. All right, let's get started playing with all these cool tools. But wait a minute. You're forgetting the most important part. We're choosing tools in order to tell a story. But we can't start playing with tools until we have some data and know what kind of story we want to tell about it. Yeah, Stacy's absolutely right. So here's an idea. I'd like to know a bit about the people who signed up to take our course, and I bet they're curious as well. So let's create a survey that asks basic questions like name, location, education, experience, and occupation. And then we can make that data public for everybody to see. Let's add two more questions. Ask them to describe their learning goal in one sentence and also make an optional web link for other students to learn more about them. This could help everyone make connections and start building a sense of community in our online course. These are wonderful ideas. And to focus on the story part, I think sometimes you need to push the computer out of the way and go back to some old school tools like these uh, colored markers. Here, take one of these. And just plain old paper. At the top of the page, I want you to write down your data story, uh, whether it's in the form of a question or as a statement. And then below that, I want you to start drawing a picture about the ideal visualization in your mind, even if you don't have the data yet. Um, no artistic skills are required, but you do need to use your imagination. For my data story, I want to know where everyone is from. I will show it with a map. For my data story, I want to know what percentages of the class represent different occupations. And I'm picturing this as a bar chart. And I'm curious about the relationship between people's level of education and their experience with data visualization, and whether I can sort of show this as a bubble chart. Let's create an exercise for everyone to draw, write out, and share their ideal story for any type of data, not just for the class data. Mm -hmm. Take a picture and post it online. All right. And why don't we create some exercises to improve spreadsheet skills, like sorting and doing calculations with our class survey results, since that's going to be important for the rest of the course. I agree. So that's great. Let's get started with the exercises listed in the links below.